waiting for it to get started. We're live. Welcome back to Hank Strange, Who Moved My Freedom podcast, live from the Big Daddy Gun studio. Hide the women and the children, because we are here to bring it. Bring it. And our special guest tonight is Diablo of Stop Moms Demand Action on Facebook, right? Yes, thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. So basically, you are an anti Moms Demand Action group, <laughs> right? Uh, it, it's it's uh, kind of really where our beginnings started. Uh, I, I like to think there were a lot more than just that, but uh, that's certainly an element that runs through it. Okay. So, um, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to you in a second here and have you explain to all the folks out here who are joining. Uh, we're talking about this uh, Moms Demand Action. I think is funded. It's funded by Every Town, right? Uh, Every Town is a, a group that uh, Michael Bloomberg uh, started when he merged um, when he merged Moms Demand Action with what used to be uh, Mayors Against Illegal Guns. Okay. <laughs> so many. So, yeah, yeah, so many crazy things. Yeah. yeah. It comes from Michael Bloomberg. Right. Okay. So cool. Yeah. So basically, um we'll we'll get we'll get into it here. We'll dig into it. I just want to introduce my other guest, which who is El Diablo. You're Diablo, he's El Diablo. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. It's Walter Keller from Safety Harbor Firearms. Walt, thanks for joining us. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. All right, cool. So um yeah, let's get into this, Diablo. Uh, basically, give us your um, your background here, how this group got started, you know, what's the uh, mission statement of the group, et cetera, so folks out there know, and and let us know exactly how to um, how to join up and help out with the cause here. Well, uh, Stop Monster Man Action is a Facebook page. Um, I'll give you a little bit of history here uh, for myself. Uh, I actually was taken on as an admin by another gentleman who actually started the page um, within the first week of the page uh, starting up. We started um, March 4th of 2014, and uh, within that first week, he took me on as an admin, and by July of that same year, he stopped making posts, and quite frankly, we've never met. Um, I have no idea what's happened to him. I've pretty much taken the reins of the page and just moved forward. So... So he kind of, so the person who founded this kind of went dark? <laughs> I, you know, he was an elderly gentleman, a uh, Vietnam oh, okay. and uh, he had some health issues, and I would not be surprised if he's passed. So, oh, okay. Uh, and, and he just didn't think to call me. So, you know, mm -hmm. kind of worked that way. Okay. Uh, anyway, so I've pretty much just taken the reins and kept up the page. Um, my beginnings in this. So for me... I was born and raised in Florida. I'm a Florida native. I lived, used, grew up not too far from where you, you live, actually. Uh, Gainesville was uh, probably a 30 minute drive from where I grew up. Oh, okay. What, what do you, can you tell us what part of Florida that is? If it's uh, Dixie, Dixie County. Right oh, there. Dixie County. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Know it. Know it. I don't yeah. know if Walter's trying to talk. I muted you, Walter. You have to unmute yourself there. <laughs> yeah. Let me see. Hello, Walter. Yeah, Walt's there, but he was making noise. So let me see if I could uh, go ahead and talk, Walter. Let me see what I don't know what happened now. Did he did he mute himself? Okay, hold on. I don't know if he can hear us. Can you hear us? Okay, yeah, you're muted. So just unmute yourself there. Hold on, let me see. I'm trying to. You know, I got a total black screen. So if I had to freaking yeah. Idea. How yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Kenneth. And All right, how about that now? Yeah, okay, yeah. I just muted you because you were banging around making a lot of noise. Oh, sorry, I'm getting there, out yeah. my zombie knife for the... Yeah, so if you're going to do that, just mute yourself for a second and All then right, come I'm back. I'm sorry, okay, I'm going to mute myself. Okay, yeah. I wish I had, like, that electronic hand that I could just reach through the screen and smack. What What I wanted to say was uh, Cross City? No, Dixie. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Cross, Cross City. Cross City, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, wait, something was in... We were talking about something in... High school. Oh really? Okay. We were, what was it we were talking about in cross? Uh, oh, Ford's custom finishing. I oh, think that's okay. yeah. I think that's in Cross City. That's where um, Babyface got the um, the Python refinished. So okay, not far. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, I grew up uh, a little town called Old Town. Old Town, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we know Old Town. Very cool. Okay, so go ahead. Anyway, uh, so I, I was born and raised there and uh, joined the Navy out of high school. I actually moved my senior year to uh, Missouri. Um, I joined the United States uh, Naval Submarine Service. I was in for eight years. Uh, my last tour was here uh, in the Seattle area where I live now. Fast attacks and, or missile boats? Uh, both, actually. Oh, okay. I used to work for General Dynamics. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've, uh, I've been in the uh, shipyards up there in EV in Connecticut. Okay. So, yeah. Anyway, um, so this was my last duty station. It's where I met my wife. Um, we got married in 99. Uh, we have twin uh, sons who were born in December of 99. And our youngest uh, son, Josh, uh, he was born in 2006. So cool. Yeah. And we live here. Um, how I got started, where I grew up, I grew up in a small town. Uh, you supported local businesses. Uh, since I was living here in the Seattle area, Starbucks is a local <laughs> business, if you will. Uh, so I drank their coffee. You know, I saw Mac the other day. Uh, so with his little Starbucks thing, I had to snicker at that. But uh, so I drank their coffee and there's a big whole controversy. I'm trying to think of exactly when it happened. It was like late uh, September, I believe, 2013. Starbucks uh, announced that they were not going to. Uh, well, they, did, they didn't welcome uh, gun owners into their establishments anymore. They didn't go so far as to say it was a gun free zone, but uh, just to appease the Moms and Man Action Group. Uh, yeah, I think things were going back and forward, right? Because you had anti gun yeah. people meeting at Starbucks and gun guys meeting at Starbucks as well. Yeah, yeah, there's actually a, a little initiative started where on Valentine's Day, um, I think it's 2012 is when they started it, uh, go into Starbucks and spend a $2 bill because they were resisting that effort to go uh, gun-free zone. Um, so that was part of something actually I supported. I went in and, and spent a $2 bill in there and dur during my purchase. Um, okay. So, you know, you don't mess with a man's coffee, right? Um they, they, they come out with that statement that uh, they didn't welcome gun owners in their stores. Uh, they wouldn't ask them to leave, uh, but it just ticked me off. Mm -hmm. And uh, those days you go, you know, you're looking for an outlet to have a conversation, understand why they would do such a thing. And so I went to their Facebook page and back in that day, um, I, I haven't been on there, haven't been welcome on their page in so long, but, but what they would do is anytime anybody said anything that was out of their party line, they would delete your comments and ban you. There was a, a rite of passage in the gun community where, you know, I've, I've been hit with the ban hammer <laughs> yeah. from Shannon Watts. So I was hit with that ban hammer and I was looking for an outlet and I found Stop Moms Demand Action. Because when you're doing the searches and everything, they pop up as well. And I started having conversations on that page and just got taken on. So that's really how I fell into it. Um, as far as mission statement, uh, you know, it, it, it's kind of a varied thing. For me, I, I know in that day when I would go on to Facebook, the pages that I was seeing were very, they weren't very welcoming to a wide audience. They were very tailored to specific audiences. And, and that's a great thing, um, you know, if you're part of that audience. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but, but there really wasn't very many pages out there that was really kind of welcoming to the, to the whole spectrum. And and it kind of lent itself to an argument the Moms Man Action Group seemed to be making at the time, which was we were all a bunch of, you know, white hicks, uneducated, small dicked. Um, <laughs> they you know, they always have to go to the small dicks. Well, yeah. small's better, yeah, than, yeah, small's better than none. So, <laughs> Well, mine's always been big enough to make me happy, so I wasn't worried about it. But uh, anyway... Um, <laughs> Okay. So for me, when I when I started the when I started working on the page, it was really just to try to make the page as welcoming to anyone who supported the Second Amendment as possible, uh, and not trying to alienate different groups. Um, you know, I fully support groups such as you know the African American Gun Owners Group, uh, the LGBT groups. Uh, there's very there's various groups. There's the One Million Moms uh, Against Gun Control, uh, who actually started up as a result of the organization that Shannon Watts. Uh, started as well so i support those uh, but i was just trying to get more of a broader spectrum 
uh, and a welcoming page that, you know, people who were tired of looking at some of the pages that were out there and didn't have a place to go or really felt like that was home to them. That's kind of what I tried to make this page. Okay. So what kind of stuff do you guys post? Um, are you waiting to see what Moms Demand Action has to say? And then you post things um, contrary to that or you know, just make general posts? You know, no, I don't. Um, I do occasionally, whenever there's a big event that happens, I'll go to see what they're posting in general, and I'll make comments on it. I've done that before. Uh, I think in the beginning, especially, especially because of you know the, the reason I got into this, I focused on them a little bit more. But you know, quite frankly, they, I mean, they're still a force to be reckoned with, but they're almost gone to the point where they're irrelevant anymore. To be honest with you. Right. Well, I mean, I know that um, Bloomberg's still spending money. All you know, these oh, guys yeah, are still yeah. putting they money out there. They by no means have stopped what they're doing. Uh, but what I mean to say is that initial um, win that they had, they've just kind of it, it's fallen short. Um, they don't have quite the momentum they used to have. Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. So. This, they're, they're still probably one of the, the most formidable groups out there, in my opinion, um, that we have to contend with as pro gunners. Uh, so you certainly have to keep them in your sights. I don't by any means think I think it's a big mistake to count them out. Yeah. But, uh, the, you know, when you look at what they were doing in the beginning and all of the freaking things they were accomplishing and, and they were actually accomplishing quite a bit, um, they're just not making the same accomplishments today that they were making then. Right. I mean, but they're definitely, I guess, through media. I mean, obviously, the media is on their side. I know they've been claiming some victories oh, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, they they um, even claim it as a victory that since uh, Trump won the election, that gun sales have kind of gone down. I don't know if they've actually gone down. I think I think gun sales, maybe they're not at their highest points, but they're still pretty much, um, you know, up there close to the highs and so far as next checks and stuff like that. So, well, you, you know, it's interesting that you mentioned that because Shannon Watts was a PR, you know, executive that the whole uh, public relations spin is, is her forte. So I'm not mm -hmm. surprised at all that she would turn some of this stuff into a quote unquote victory for, for the, the Montana Action Group. Yeah, absolutely. So is there anything that's going on in the news right now that, um, you know, that's got your ire up that we that we should talk about? I mean, we usually here on the show, we usually get into, um, you know, top, like we talk about anything, man, to be honest with you. We'll talk about small dicks if we have to. You know, not that we we don't really know that much about small dicks, obviously, because we're all like, you know, we're all Mendingo dudes here, even though, you know. I'm like the only one. I gave you guys the uh, Mandingo ghetto pass. There you go, right there. See with this wave? It's well, like the reverse of what Trump does. Big, big, big dick gun owner, so. You know. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, the, first, the, the first step to recovery is meaning you've got a problem, right? <laughs> you have to admit to the problem, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, we talk about anything, but I figure before we get into our talking about anything, is there some stuff that's been going on lately that you'd like to talk about, you know, hot topics? Well, I, I guess there's two. Um, the first one is, is big time in the news, and the other one was just a conversation that was happening on my page. Okay. So um, one is the, uh, the shooting here of the Australian uh, woman who, uh, uh, by the police officer, that, that's mm -hmm. one of the big things most recent in the news going on. Yeah, and that's, yeah, that's right. Was that, that was in Washington State, right? Um, was it? No, no, I forget where that was. No. no, it wasn't in Washington State. Minnesota. Minnesota, Minnesota, right. Minneapolis. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's that's one of the big things going on most recently anyway. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and just to kind of tag off that slightly, one of the one of the things that I do on my page is I consider Stop Moms to Man in Action to be essentially a clearinghouse for gun news. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to stay on top of what's happening in the gun community. Uh, you know, gun-related news. Uh, my page is a page where I just collect all of these different articles that have been written and put them mm -hmm. in one place, easily accessible to people. Okay. All right. So, so, so in terms of this uh, Australian bride, um, what's your take on that? Well, there's not enough information out, and that's just the thing. I think so many people jump to conclusions. I've 
I've actually held off on uh, many occasions when we had a shooting and rather than post on it right away, just kind of wait for some of the information to come out. There's just so much that's unknown. And I think so many people jump to conclusions right away. Um, it's, it's, it's a very uh, socially touchy subject with regards to the individuals involved in the shooting. Um, and, and, you know, the gun community at large has a tendency to demonize certain groups. So for me, if that's the case, by all means, go there, but mm -hmm. let's wait for the facts. And that's kind of how right. I've always tried to run things. Okay. Um, jump to conclusions. Yeah. So when you, when you speak of demonizing, are you referring to demonizing the police officer or what? Well, it, yeah, I mean, that part of it, that's part of it, but it's also, uh, you know, it's my understanding he was Muslim. Mm -hmm. um, and again, with, with, what I'm trying to accomplish on the page, keeping it open to the widest possible audience. Um, if again, this was that evil Muslim just trying to kill Americans, you know, by all means, that's mm -hmm. fine, but we'll go there. But, but until we know more, I'm certainly not trying to take it there on my own. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, um, I, I, like you said, we don't know anything that's going on. We may never know, or That's we may true. never really get the full story. I think it's highly unlikely that he went through everything to become a police officer and then decided to target this, you know, Australian chick instead of just, he, he could have done a lot more damage if that was the case. I think, um, yeah. you know, th it's this is probably a case of, uh, of like really bad training and not proper vetting, you know, there's which I think is going there, on yeah. around the country. Yeah. yeah. There's definitely a lot of that out there. Uh, again, I'm not trying to say that's not the case. I, I try not to run with conspiracy theories. I really try to keep that out. That's one of the things that annoyed me way back in the day. Uh, there's just so many pages that really run with these conspiracy theories. And mm -hmm. if, if I've got something that says, yes, that's what was going on, fine, I'll, I'll post it. I'm not going to hide it. But but until we know more, I just try not to, mm -hmm. I try not to put that spin on there myself. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, if we ever find out more about this. You know, um, so, okay, so any other things that were going on that you wanted to? Um, yeah, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. There was a conversation going on on my page, and uh, guns.com had posted an article that I shared with my page uh, talking about bald eagles and uh, them uh, eating lead and freaking dying and stuff. Uh, okay. I shared it with my page, and the conversation revolved around the uh, lead alternative ammunition copper ammunition. So for me, it was like, okay, I don't know enough about this particular study to even comment on it. And everybody keeps going to the windmill things about how many they kill. I'm like, okay, well, this page isn't about windmills, but, but, but let's at least focus on what we do talk about, which is firearms. So what do we know about copper ammunition? How, how effective is it? Um, how accurate is it? How does it perform when it hits a target? That sort of thing. I was trying to search up articles and things. I'm like, you know, why would somebody prefer lead ammunition versus copper ammunition? As a matter of fact, um, I, I messaged Copper Customs to see if they'd actually done a uh, study or any sort of videos on it that I could share with my page. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people seem, it, it, they were very touchy about that subject. And I'm fine with that if you've got a reason, but nobody was really putting forth much. Uh, much yeah, of so, was, so the, was the study saying that there's a direct correlation between um, lead in ammunition and what's going on with the bald eagles because there's I think there's lots yeah. of places lead can be coming from yeah that's that was the gist of the study and and again I I posted the study because the I posted the articles because the study was done again I'm trying to keep people informed yeah. FYI, study was yeah. done what's being said and, and then we started down the road the conversation of copper ammunition and people are like mm -hmm. oh it's just this big conspiracy to to get rid of ammunition and make it more difficult for people to shoot and i'm like yeah well if that's the case then show me i mean i i i'm not opposed to your conspiracy theory here but but to me i don't know what the difference between getting rid of lead ammunition and copper ammunition is i don't even understand the link yeah here. walter you have any opinion on the lead versus copper ammo? well typically the groups that push for the lead banning are tied to banning guns too. I mean, they're not far off. Right, right. So it's not right. hard to put the two together. Um, Eagles have been taken off the endangered list, if I'm not mistaken, 
and there's more there's more eagles now than there ever been and there's just as much ammunition and lead ammunition so it's not a real viable real viable argument um right they, only way that you get sick from lead is by eating lead um you don't you don't get sick by it from it because it's close to you or, or sure and same for the eagle too so and, um, and that's part of the reason i didn't focus on that part of this the, the yeah. conversation it was okay so let's just compare lead ammunition to copper you know what are the right. differences yeah. how do they perform that sort of thing i mean there's definitely a, a movement against lead that mm -hmm. goes that goes way further than just the animals and all that stuff um because sure. you know one of Obama's last thing was, I think the last, I don't know if it was his fault directly, but the last lead smelting operation in the U.S. closed. I heard about that, yeah. So what's up with that? You know, I mean. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and at this stage, right, um, lead is useful for like. It's used uh, all over the place. Yeah, it's yeah. used in a lot of things, but when it comes to ammunition, it makes it easier for people to do their own casting and stuff like that, it's, right? It's, it's, and that's an argument that never really come up. That was right. kind of what mm -hmm. I was looking for people to say. Uh, I don't cast my own ammunition, so I, I really don't know how difficult it is to cast. I think there's people that do. I know Babyface does. I've done some, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. and, lead, lead is cheap, too. Yeah, Copper's, sure. not, Copper's not cheap. And you can get it from a lot of places. Like I think Babyface yeah. gets it from um, auto, like places where they change tires. Because oh, yeah. I think weights. they use it to, yeah, they use it to balance the wheels. Right. Yeah. There's wheel weights. There's the roofers when they they do roofing. There's lead that they use in the uh, roofing. Yeah. How do we know that like the wheel weights aren't dropping off and the eagles are eating that? I mean, <laughs> eagles. Well, yeah. yeah. Or the eagles are eating some rats or squirrels or whatever. Whatever eagles eat. I don't know if they. they yeah. You know, they yeah, but then so, McDonald's or something. So, I don't know. If that's the case, then why are the eagles so plentiful now? Yeah. No. It's well, not. Again, yeah. Again, I'm. I was trying to stray this away from the study itself. Uh, yeah. More the. Okay, why are people so insistent on using copper versus, uh, I'm sorry, lead versus copper, and and have the conversation revolve around that per se? Yeah. Again, I think it's just because lead that. is easy to cast, right? It's just that whole situation Which, of it being, yeah, easy, yeah. more it's, more it's available, plentiful. Yeah, yeah. Right. and it's a, it's kind of um, an apocalyptic thing, right? Because if you get into a situation where you can't get stuff and, and you could just cast it yourself and make your bullets. And so you yeah. feel like you're, you kind of have some insurance if people try to do things like, you know, there's obviously states where you have to get licenses or background checks just to buy ammo. All right. So right. it's sort of something to combat yeah. that, I would say. So, so some things to consider here again, uh, just, just to clarify, I, I was by no means suggesting that I am for lead ammunition ban of any sort. That wasn't even the gist of the conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm certainly not for that. It was really yeah. more just an issue of asking why the gun community as uh, an entity is so unwilling to even consider copper as an option. Right. Um, I, you know, I don't think that it's that we're not willing to consider it as an option. I, we're always sure. into options. It's just that why take away an option? Why that's viable? It's yeah, not. Yeah. You know, it's not a matter of having an option. It's a matter of being told uh -huh. what you're going to do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that, there's a big difference between saying, "Hey, I want a windmill," and being told you're going to have a and windmill whether you like it or not okay yeah and, and, and we can never get away from that part of the argument to even discuss the, the part that i was trying to discuss which is you know is that something that we want to consider to do uh ourselves because uh, again i'm not looking for anybody to force that on anybody right uh, oh like so you're saying you're you're saying should we censor ourselves and voluntarily give up the ability to yeah. use lead you not give up the ability just, just uh -huh. shift using copper ammunition I think part, yeah but I don't think them. everyone I don't think everyone does it so therefore it's right. you know well, I, I think I think Hank you should trade your 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 muscle car in for a nice little electric three-wheel fuck, fuck no. for the people that are willing to do that <laughs> my answer is but, no but there's, forget I live in Seattle there's plenty of people who do that here. but 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 those yeah. people will also say you're going to do it whether you like it or not yeah and, I think, and, and I that's think, not that's not that's not cool so, yeah I think I the art go ahead well, what I was going to say is I think the argument that um, gun guys specifically would make is if we voluntarily agree to these things, you know, um, it's like you give someone, you know, you give them an inch, they take a, 
you know, a mile. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Guess, so you're talking about laws, and I'm not. I'm not talking about laws. I'm simply talking mm -hmm. about when you make your purchase of ammunition. If you, have, copper, you can have a choice. Yeah. yeah. Right. Exactly. That's and let I'm let let the free market. Yeah, but I think I think most of us already do that. I think most of us already make that decision and go in that direction. And then there are some folks out there who, you know, who still do that and they kind of have the right to do it. Now, let me just let me just interject a quick comment here from the Tyvin show. He says, uh, if lead is an issue, then why can I go fishing with lead weights? Well, there's oh no people God. trying to ban yeah. fishing they, in the yeah. lakes of America. Yes, there are. Yeah, I, I yes, bet, there. I, yeah, there's probably some people. <laughs> yes, there are. <laughs> and there's there's alternatives to lead for it, fishing weights too. Yeah, and and again, I'm not trying to have anybody ban lead per se. Mm -hmm. and, and it, that's where everybody keeps trying to take the conversation. They're not they're so un mm -hmm. they're so stuck they can't even have a real conversation. I'm yeah. like, just 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 forget about laws and bans for a moment, and let's just talk about the ammunition. Right. So how does it perform? What studies are out there? I'm genuinely asking the question. How well right. does it perform? Is this something we should think about? Think? Yeah, I think at this point, I don't know who knows how well it performs. Yeah. So we would we would definitely have to um, get some kind of expert on how it performs. I don't really think it's an issue of how it performs, to be honest with you. Sure. Um, and I think that you know, um, there, most of us are, are probably already, I think in, in, in society in general, we're not using as much lead as we used to, let's say, you know, right. 60 years ago, right? right? We've already curtailed it and, and um, lead is somewhat naturally occurring. <laughs> yeah, dig it out of the ground in Illinois. <laughs> yeah, in the environment. So yeah. we're never going to totally get rid of lead unless we plan somehow to save the bald eagles. We're going to get all the lead and then float it into space and then kill the space bald eagles. <laughs> well, <laughs> someone, <again, laughs> you know, was the gist of the article that was shared. I, yeah, I, no, I understand. I get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think, I think, you know, I'm not knocking you for the point. I think that. Um, listen, I, here's the question. Here's what I think the question is. Right, if we want to boil it down, are gun guys do gun or do gun guys care about the environment? Yeah, they do. Yeah. And but I think no, the answer is yes, right? We care uh, about the some, environment. Some of the best conservational uh, efforts made are made by gun owners and hunters. Right, and hunters and all that stuff. stuff. Yeah. Absolutely, they, yeah. They're certainly more connected with the environment. They, they appreciate it more. And they certainly, I mean, all these people who want to be tree-hugging environmentalists, you look at uh, the urbanization and, and how much they pollute and how much they litter. I mean... <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> and also, most of us gun guys actually live in nature. A lot of these yeah. gun grabbing guys live in concrete jungles. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They, they do it as part of a freaking uh, a fad. They're, yeah. They're, yeah. They're, While they live in the concrete jungle, I mean, I'm sure the concrete jungle is doing a lot to kill off the uh, bald eagles. Oh, you know, uh, not that, not that I, you know, I'm not against it. Some people want to live in the cities and all that. I did it for a long time. But I, I, you know, um, I think that most, I wouldn't say all, but a lot of gun guys out there would agree with me. They like living out in nature and, and we care about things. But I think like Walter said, we just don't want people to force things. Yeah, on that, us. That's, the, that's the main right. thing. It's just just stop telling me what I have to do, you know, and, because you think it's the right thing to do. Right. Right. You know? Right. And and again, I, I completely agree with you, Walter, on that. That's yeah. yeah. And, it, it gets and it's like it's. When you have these kinds of conversations, getting past that hurdle is the first step. So you can even talk about it. And, and that's sometimes really difficult in an online forum. Right. It, yeah. But there's lots of different, I think there's lots of different, uh, we were talking, I think last night, I think we did last night, we were talking about copper, uh, not copper, polymer um, shell casings and things like that, mm -hmm. polymer rounds. You know, there's, um, th th there's, there's, about it just just recently yeah 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 but um but i'm sure on the flip side of that environmentalists will say oh you know yeah these creatures are eating the polymer shell case no, pol <laughs> polymers not, polymers not about saving the world or doing anything polymers about carrying more ammunition to kill more people so it's like yeah. yep. bottom bottom line it's not about anything else besides that <laughs> yeah um, it, it's so that you can carry more because it's lighter right, yeah right, right. right. Um, Nate Ski says, you take away a resource and now you have control on a resource that is not easy to get. Again, again so we're not trying, I'm not, wasn't suggesting to take it away. Again, people no, keep no, no. going back. Stop. 
don't go there. I'm not talking about getting rid of it. I'm saying as a purchaser of ammunition, pick up copper versus uh, lead. I mean, what are the performance characteristics of the copper ammunition? Is this something that's even, does it perform better? Does it perform worse? People are mm -hmm. so unwilling. To well, what's the majority it? of ammo that's sold in gun stores? The it's majority is lead. It's right. copper. It's copper jacketed lead. Copper jacketed, yeah. yeah copper jacketed lead, right? Or so now, what's the price? Is what's the price difference with just the uh, copper then? Is it more expensive? It's more expensive. Yes, it is, and it is okay. because the demand, the demand right now is not there for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's typically copper bullets are typically used by people that are shooting. So, um, yeah for uh, competition type shooting and stuff like that. It's yeah. not usually yeah. used just for going out like we do so, and shooting dirt. Shooting yeah, so dirt. first let's ask ourselves, like I, I don't know, this is probably a little bit off topic, but um, how many gun guys do you think out there drive around in Priuses? Do you, you guys know any? <laughs> <laughs> do you know any gun guys? Because I've actually come across one in my life. There, I was uh, – I was at a show and there was a guy claiming to be a gun guy who's driving around a Prius and I and I was like I call bullshit, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But, I mean, there could be there could be gun guys. That well, you first have to quantify gun guy. I, I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. just own one. <laughs> just one gun, yeah. or maybe it was just a guy who's in the gun industry posing as a gun guy. I think. Yeah, probably um, so. But you know, I think we that take, we can take this out of context too because. Uh, like, for instance, the smart gun technology. Mm -hmm. um, I think the big resistance here is, again, just what Walter was saying. I don't think anybody in the gun community has a problem with smart gun technology. They certainly don't want it by any means. But the mm -hmm. big issue with it is they don't want it forced on them. And that's what the legislatures are trying to do. They're yeah, trying to yeah, it's... okay, once this is prolific in the gun community, now we can say it's in common use and we can say you have to have it. Yeah, that's the resistance. Uh, we got a comment from Knock Firearms Training. I think he was on with us. Uh, was it last? I can't remember. No, it wasn't yesterday. Probably the day before. Probably the day before. Yeah, uh, Monday. So that would, you know, um, that would be Kevin Dixie. And he says, forcing things on me is the opposite of freedom. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's my like, God. Yeah. That, but that's a, but here, here's a, that's a, that's a, this is how, this is how we react as gun guys, right? We're like, oh, I, don't know. I know, I know. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's, it's in our DNA, man. It's not, we're not going to stop. Here, here, here's part of it too. A lot of these issues are not issues. Right. There's, there's no issue. It's just right. something that some 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 guy that says I'm going to tell you what to do, and you're going to do it, and and they can't tell you why either. Logically, well, I, I don't see too many people eating lead, so obviously, yeah, lead yeah. Is I, mean, free, but. I mean, there was a time when it was in paint, you know, and kids gnawed on ah, but that isn't around anymore hardly either. I mean, I know I've, I know what lead tastes like. By accident, um, uh, sure, Walter. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you right. how. I'll, I'll tell you how. Really simple. You pressure wash an old house, mm -hmm. and Garen, and an old house is going to be painted with lead. You get a sweet taste in your mouth. It's not because candy. It's it's lead. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, so if you don't know on it twenty four seven, you're not going to, you know. Yeah. Look what happened to me. I'm still halfway normal. Sure. But, um, <laughs> I, I, a lot of these okay. people are coming out as if I don't understand their resistance to what I do. Mm -hmm. Again, stop, stop. I'm, I'm not trying to say that I want this. Yeah, they, well, you're right. saying that we're, we're obviously preaching to the choir. So, you you right. know, you don't want anyone to force you into anything either. Right. Not at all. Yeah. Right. And without, without right. Going, back, going back to the car thing, I mean, you know what I drive. Yeah. Yeah. You drive muscle cars. Yes. Yeah. So, and you know what? I'm, I'm annoyed here. I'm annoyed here in Washington State yeah. because I'm trying to. I mean, I was going to say a Prius since nobody really knows other than me. No. But whatever. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's start another controversy. I'm of the I'm of the of the liking of this. If you can afford to have every light on your house and run the water all day long, and you can pay for it, have at it. Yeah. If right. you want to drive a thousand five thousand horsepower car and do a hundred gallons a second, yeah. if you can pay for it. Have it. But here's the thing. I mean, yeah. and I'm not I'm not. Here's the thing, though. You know what? We don't do that. Like the reason why we don't run every light in our house and we take like I'm always walking around the house like like my parents or something drives Lola crazy. I'm always walking around taking off lights. <laughs> oh, I, I, she's I, like, what's wrong with you? I grew up in the 70s. So, yeah, during the, during the energy crisis stuff, when I was a kid, you turned off the damn lights or you get the back of your head knocked up. You know, it's like, yeah, hey, yeah you know, I mean, the lights off. 
You know, yeah, turn, turn your TV off. You're not watching it. You know, it's like, ugh. right. Yeah, exactly. I also don't run like a lot of people in Florida. They set their air conditioning on 65 degrees. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Walter. No, so, I, don't do, I, I don't do that cold. My wife would be frozen. She'd be in a corner. Yeah. You know, I keep mine somewhere between 78 and 80. And people are like, what is wrong uh -huh. with you? I'm like, uh, because uh, it's 90. There's a huge, you know, difference but so for me but here's the thing that's voluntary a natural right. thing of me where yeah. I right. want to save money and you right. know all that kind of stuff so I have a muscle car but what I love about it my car is actually more Lola has this Kia that I've been that I hate she knows I hate this she has a Kia Sorento and I hate that son of a bitch and that thing it's a Kia it's a four-cylinder Kia Sorento and it has this stupid eco boost thing yeah and I could tell you right now my Challenger which is a Hemi uh, scat pack Hemi all right, 6.4 liter gets like 25 miles per gallon, right. and her thing doesn't even get 20. And you know, and you know, people, people don't, people nowadays think, you know, well, that's not that good, that's not that great. You know, back when I was well, back in the 70s, that same Challenger maybe that was got eight or ten, I think. Yeah, yeah, on yeah. a good on a good day. Yeah, and was yeah. spewing out oil and gas and everything else. Now yeah. the cars don't put anything out. Right, but if you talk about like a Corvette, a Corvette is getting more than that. I think Corvettes are getting oh. close to thirty or over. You know, there's lots of different, lots yeah. of different technology out there. Right, Ford's, right, right, uh, right. Ford's coming up with like the eco, the eco well, boost and the turbo boost and everything. They're a lot getting... of, a lot of it's been forced on them. They're, you know, in a muscle car, yeah. the only reason they're going, only reason they're going to V6 is because they got to meet these crazy, um, gas and mileage things, yeah. right? and emission stuff, which is crazy. Yeah. But I understand that. But at the same time, I, I agree with you. I get that. But at the same time, so for example, if you look at uh, the Ford, um, the Raptor, right? The eight, the um, the V8 Raptor versus the new one that's a V6 with turbo boost and aluminum is more powerful and faster than the V8 version. So I, so if you think about it, I know there's lots of guys out there like, oh, I'd rather get the V8 one. And I get it for the, the sound of the engine and all that. That is a big deal. But if I was doing it today, I would probably just get the new one with the uh, you know turbo boost. That's lighter, more efficient, and, and more powerful. Well, I, I think we're all happy with the having more options. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. If, you, you, and that's really all I'm talking about. I'm not talking mm -hmm. about banning stuff or forcing regulations on anybody, yeah. which is where everybody keeps trying to take the conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, again. I haven't seen very many reliable studies or videos done on the copper ammunition. I'm genuinely curious. Yeah, I think it would be, it'll, it'll probably, one, it's going to be expensive. <laughs> so if someone out there wants to volunteer to help us, like, do that and send us a bunch of ammo, you know, that we, I don't even know if we have the equipment to do that test, to be honest with you, even it if would, we had the ammo. It, it wouldn't be very scientific, let's just no. put it that way. Yeah, we'll just come up with a, I can tell you what the answer is going to be right now. <laughs> Because uh, ultimately, okay, here's the thing. We're all going to look at money. That's the thing. If, if right. the bottom line, yeah, that's what happens when we buy a lot of stuff. You know, um, a lot of things, uh, unless it's something that's real close to our hearts. So for me, if it's a muscle car or if I'm buying a car, I really don't care about money. I, I you know, because <laughs> the biggest thing to me with a car, which is going to sound crazy to people, is the look back. So when I get out of my car and when I'm walking away, from, yeah, when I'm walking away from it, I want to look back and go, damn. Oh, I thought you were talking about me looking in my rearview mirror back at you. Oh, yeah, that too. But what I'm saying is like, you know, it's like if I didn't care about how the car looked, you know, then we would all just be driving the same car. So I, it, it does matter to me. Like I care about power and performance yeah. and all that. But I really, you know, I, I like that ability of looking back in my car in a parking lot and it doesn't look like every other and, car and, in the parking and, lot. And you, and you go, that, man, my, my car pretty badass. That's what yeah, I'm you know, it's just like with I, your woman, you know, you like yeah. you know, that your woman's sexy. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you mentioned that because I completely agree with you. I mean, these days cars have no personality. Yeah. And when they try these eco cars it's like the people designing them are there's like a special freaking retard group of people designing <laughs> them as well, as possible. and i think also because of aerodynamics lots of cars look alike i can't tell the difference a lot of times now with a mercedes bmw or a honda or kia here, and <laughs> here all, all i'll say is car design is very cyclic mm -hmm. so you'll go from square say suburban you'll go from square suburban to round suburban <laughs> The square suburban, the round suburban. It, I've seen it in my own. You know, it's just 
they're back to square now again. They're not. They're losing yeah. the round. But also, like with Arrow, that like because of efficiency stuff, like you were saying, because we are forcing these companies to like the overall their overall fleet has to meet a certain average or mean um, efficiency level. Then that's just all aerodynamics, and that's all the same. Then every car is going to look the same for aerodynamics. Yeah, but you know what? Then nobody will buy any of those cars. So. Yeah, well, I will stop. I mean, you know, when they stop making stuff like if you look at it, like you were just saying, things being cyclic. Now the muscle cars are going retro, right? They're right, going well, retro that- and styling. Because that's what people really want, anyways. To be honest yeah. with you, but it's the I same thing. Cars with personality, yeah. Yeah, isn't it the same thing with guns? Like most, of, we we all have the practical guns that we carry on us and we would use for defense of the home, and and then you got the really bad guns. Oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> but why? But why? So why did you get a high point? Because lately everyone's been talking about high points, right, Walter? So you're like, oh, well, I'm yeah, getting I, one. I mean, I, yeah, it was just curiosity, you know. And I, 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 we're just gonna play with it and have some fun and. And I want to see everybody's doing it right. And and I want to see what if I can make it not work or and that so far yeah. it works. So so tell people what you're holding up for the folks that are listening to us on iTunes. Okay, yeah, it's the High Point JH, G, JHP, which is the uh, 45. Um, I bought it. I, I did some horse trading today with a with a local guy here. Um, it's used. Took it out in the shop. Put it in the bull trap. Shot 20 rounds through it. It ate it all up. Shot fine. Yeah, so it's you. So that guy, if there were any, sometimes there's no problems with high points, but if there were any, that guy probably sorted them out. Well, I mean, uh, he was, I think it was more just luck um, because he's not a sorting out kind of guy. Oh, okay. Uh, (laughs) And a lot of people aren't. You know, if it doesn't work, they don't know why it doesn't work. So, yeah. Um, But we're going to play with it and just have some fun and we'll make some videos, of course. But you did a lot of videos as of late with the high points. People just, yeah. uh, Put them through some rigors and see what they can make make happen yeah. with them. You know, I'm, I'm in, when I can pick up any kind of ammo and just throw it in it and it works, that's a plus. You know, I mean, yeah. a lot, a lot of a lot of fancy guns don't do that. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, so the big thing with the high point. Someone's calling you a traitor, Walter. Oh, <laughs> come on. High point. No. <laughs> the you know, haters. I, we love. I, we also love to hate people who buy high points. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, my my son brought up a good point. The reason people don't like high points is because the people run around with baggy pants and shoot sideways. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, but this weekend when we were testing those high points, didn't we have to? The guys that came out, like 904, was there this weekend, so we should shout them out. They just put yeah. up a video um, with the KES stock, by the way. Okay, he- 904, I'm getting your plug in right now. They have a the KES stock from Safety Harbor Firearms. They just put up a video, but they brought. Um, locks and load right right locks and load yeah yeah and they were shooting a high point and it wouldn't work until he turned it sideways <laughs> well that was funny when when i had their 904s out there a couple weekends mm-hmm. ago i did the same thing i got mad at it and started cussing and it started working maybe it's designed to work that way because that's how it that's the uh standard operation in the hood you gotta go sideways <laughs> my, my, know. you know my son my son said today will he says you know what that's why those that's why those guys all have the pants down past their ank, you know, past their ass because of the weight of the high points. Are yeah, <laughs> it's big massive. Yeah, that well, is also it's, the. It's, it's funny because uh, you know I was sitting here talking about how like you, you look at the old guys they got their pants up to their armpits, <laughs> yeah, armpits that's, that's, and have it down to their waist, <laughs> and then the younger have it down to their ass cheeks. I'm like in a couple of generations they'll just have to be walking around with pants around their ankles. Yeah, or or the pants will be up over their heads or something. You'll just be looking out the crotch of your pants while you're walking. Oh, hey, when I was making all that noise and you muted me, uh-huh. I was taking my zombie poker out of the oh, package. Nice, nice. It's okay. supposed to mount on the... Okay, so go ahead and show us. So does that mount on the high point? Well, it won't because the high point has one slot and it's too far back. Uh. So, yeah, yeah, so... Okay, so yeah. you can't make it a. Um, someone's calling. Uh, Chris B is calling for a torture test, Walter, at that high <laughs> well, point. That we could do. That yeah, we, that could, we do. could do. Yeah, yeah that well, could the, thing, do. the thing I was saying, I think this is part of it, right? Like the reason why you got a high point is because there's been high point. I don't know. This yeah. is def, this is probably a real conspiracy. Uh, maybe high point has been getting stuff in the news there or whatever. People have been buying high points. So that makes you interested. But typically with guns, that's why we're buying. Like if you're a gun guy and you have more than like two to four guns, you know, you're buying guns just because you're interested. Like um, 
you know, Diablo has in the background here for folks who are listening to us. I see a some, star back there. Yeah, and... he's got some badass guns. Can you tell us where you are? I'm at Pantel Tactical. It's okay. A, it's a gun outlet here in Renton, Washington. Okay, Pantel Tactical. And is that an operational bazooka behind you? That's what I see. <laughs> I see a law. I see a law's, I see a law's rocket. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I know. It probably is it. I just figured I'd ask. <laughs> The answer is no. <laughs> yeah. I think I see an HK. I see a, a Styrog, some different things behind you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, th this is what they have here on the wall. I, I, honestly, I, I, I took a leak and I come in here and set up my phone. I haven't had a chance to look myself what's behind me, to be honest with you. Oh, okay. But, cool. Uh, <laughs> All right. So, shout out to uh, what is it? Pantel Tactical? Pantel Tactical, yes. Pantel Tactical in Washington for having Diablo. Of oh. For everyone who's listening, this is Stop Moms Demand Action on Facebook. So I want to encourage everyone that's watching, listening, and all that, go on Facebook. If I know there's going to be a bunch of people like, I don't have Facebook. I get it. I, I, I'm with you. If I wasn't doing this, I wouldn't have Facebook either. But if you do have Facebook, go on Facebook and like uh, Stop Moms Demand Action. Thank you. That's who we have on today. Go ahead, Walter. What were you going to say? No, I was going to say American Gun Chick says that high points look retarded. So, <laughs> oh, really? Uh, I, I, okay. I agree with you there, Brickell, But um, Yeah, Brickell. Um, first, of I, all, first of all, I can tell you something. If uh, Brickell had a high point in her hands, nobody's going to say it looks retarded. Cause, they're not looking. Yeah, <laughs> they're not looking at the high point. Yeah, I mean, Sorry. I was looking at that video that she did uh, on the hacienda. You know, I mean, I know she probably thinks she looks silly because she was trying to be cool and all that. Oh, that was didn't. fun. That was a yeah. that was well, fun. Yeah. You you know what the best gun in the world is, right? The, the one, one you got. You have in your hand. <laughs> yeah. The one that the one that goes bang. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. That's the one. And so yes, uh, you know, um, American Gun Chick, if you haven't shot a high point, you know, go ahead. Dual high point. As a matter of fact, I want to see American Gun Chick dual wielding high point. There you go. So when she does this video and it blows up and it's like a million views, you you better you better give me a shout out in that video. Damn it. I saw I saw Demolition Ranch did a, did a torture test on one of those the other day and he was like running over it and everything and sure mm -hmm. enough, the person was shooting. So I think he even shot he shot it and. Mm -hmm. it, it, I can't remember exactly what damage it, it, it part, part took on the on the firearm, but it, but even after taking a round, the thing yeah. still fired. Well, yeah, I don't know if he's still there, but I saw Aaron from We Like Shooting in the chat not too long ago. I saw him. He was complaining about something to do with me, so he was in the chat uh, trolling me a little bit. But he actually was out on the Hacienda, and we I think he brought a gun, and I had some different guns there that we were shooting some weird guns like this. And I happened to have a high point because I was doing something to see if I could buy a handgun and a rifle for 100 bucks or less. And my the high point 9mm pistol I had was um, fell into that category. And it was the only gun that we had out of like maybe three or four guns that actually worked. The high point. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't, you know, so. I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't overly um, um, hateful. No, 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 I wasn't overly. Um, um, I'm trying to say the word. I wasn't expecting it to work perfectly. Let's right. say it that way. Especially okay. with especially with the, all the the different ammo I had, but it did. You know, so yeah. yeah. Um, and maybe it's just luck of the draw. I guess I don't know. What do you plan on doing with this thing? Just a disclaimer. Uh, mm -hmm. Stop. My Demand action by no means has tons of uh, high point posts on my page. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea how this uh, monopolized our conversation, but I just yeah. To put oh, that out are you trying? Oh, you don't want to lose people because we're talking about the high points. <laughs> <laughs> you better put some high point stuff on your page now, man. You know, I probably will after this yeah. conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Early. No, we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna do, we're gonna give it some different colors, yeah. and I'm gonna do a few mods, and maybe. Mount a real sight on it because the sights are horrendously bad. But yeah. um, you know, I even thought about putting a can on it. But yeah, I guess listen, high points of guns too. You know, I mean, maybe that high yeah. point, maybe that high point identifies hey. itself as a H and K. <laughs> we also have an you idea. Know, many people have made the point. Uh, you know, for some of the people out there um, who can't afford something better, All right. All right. the price range. That it is, it's it's not a bad option for what it is. It's you know, there's not much out there as cheap as a high point that's right. that's better. Yeah. Well, I, I tell you what, if I needed it, it would have worked today. It would have done just right. fine. So yeah. You know. 
All right, so let's um, let's switch up here a little bit and hit up some uh, some. I don't know if this is this is gun news. Obviously, uh, the Truth About Guns had this article called "Black Woman Carries Gun on Campus." New York Times readers heads explode. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with Antonia Okafor. She is. Um, I think she's part of the NRA, if I'm not mistaken. But she, I guess, she did some kind of. Uh, she wrote a piece for the New York Times talking about, um, you know, she's a University of Tex uh, Texas Dallas student, and it says uh, that uh, gun control is uh, racist, classist, and sexist. Not surprisingly, the comments under uh, a recent New York Times opinion piece written by Antonia Okafor, University of Texas Dallas student, proved the point better than any gun rights supporter ever could. The Times published the op-ed, Why I Bring My Gun to School, and all hell broke loose on their comment sections. Uh, gun haters, yeah. yeah, gun haters' heads reacting to the cognitive dissonance of a black female campus carrier popped like Orville Redenbacher in a microwave. <laughs> what's, what's the date on that article? Uh, let me see. This is uh, July twenty sixth, and it's on the Truth About Guns. Okay. So, um, you know, first of all, she's uh, very attractive. I think I, I think black I woman, uh, in, in my personal opinion. Yeah. She's got a nice smile. Um, Okafor is actually a Nigerian name. I recognize that. I don't know if she was born here in America or Nigeria. Probably her parents are from Nigeria, but, you know, I right. likes the African hotties, as obviously <laughs> I'm married to Lola. <laughs> and just FYI, Lola's from, you know, she's Ghanaian, so there you go, which is right next door to Nigeria. I actually lived in Nigeria as a kid, so, yeah, um... So these guys are all mad. I mean, does, is that surprising from the New York Times? No, no, not at all. No. no. I mean, they don't, they don't even really. I, LA Times, the New York Times, the Washington Post, all of those, yeah. It's, it's, uh, nowadays, all, it's just a standard reply. It doesn't have any basis. They don't have anything to back it up. It's just, they're just auto, auto furious. You know, it's, yeah. like, they can't explain why they are or anything. And I think well, that we need to have more. A, Go ahead. This is part of the reason I wanted to make uh, my page open to a wide variety of people, because mm. um, I wanted diversity in responses to different uh, anti-gun arguments. I wanted people from different perspectives to be able to look at the things people were saying and say, well, this was my experience or this was my experience. I had a, a gentleman a couple years back. He popped on my page and he started talking about how I was, you know, this we were all homophobic, all of our, our gun people. And, what? and of course he'd never really hung out on my page very long because he didn't know that we had quite a few LGBT people on our page who are fans of the page. Yeah. So when the post about the whole dang thing, he quickly deleted all of his freaking comments and disappeared. I, I don't typically delete people's comments um, because I want the conversation to be seen. And he deleted all his comments and disappeared. And, and these guys were like, where is he? Where is he? Where's the, where's the post? They were all trying to find him and, and hunt him down and freaking put him straight. So it was, it was a bit of a proud moment for me. Yeah. You know, listen, I think in any segment of society, you have people that are racist or homophobic or this thing or that thing. Um, and gun guys are like anything else. But for the most part, I mean, you know, what we care about is do you believe in the Second Amendment? Well, and also yeah. the, hom the that homophobic thing that they like to they throw that word around like racist. Once again, I don't like to be told who I who I'm supposed to be like. Right? I, sure. I don't I don't meet you and automatically like you because you just happen to be a human being. We have to inter we have to interact, you know. Yeah. If you're a turd and I'm a turd, we're both turds, you know what I mean? But we'll probably get along. <laughs> if, yeah. if 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 we uh, if we if we treat each other like humans, I don't care what you are, I, but I don't want you to push your, your whatever yeah. on me. You know, I mean, I just, that's just, you know, I, I don't know. That's what, yeah. I, that's what I, I don't think. I don't like everybody. I used to just say all the time, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, I, I guess what do you say? It's like, uh, um, I'm, uh, I'm not, I'm, I'll, I'll come up with a thing, but I don't, I just hate everybody. So <laughs> you know, uh, you, universal you, hater. Right, right. Just equally fair. You just hate everybody. You know, it's like yeah. you're, you're, Equal opportunity hater. Right, right. Equal opportunity, right? I just hate everybody. Well, you know what the truth is, is first of all, there's lots of gay people in the gun community, and uh, yeah. some of them are really badass. I mean, some real serious. You've got the pistols, you've got the blazing sword. Um, there's, there, there's a number of different initiatives out there. Yeah. 
Uh, there's uh, LGBT for gun rights on the Facebook. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's a number. You of know, them. we see these folks at SHOT Show. We see them at our NRA, for example. Nobody does anything to them or whatever. I mean, obviously, people have, like, natural reactions to stuff, right? You know, and, yeah. uh, and um, I think, like, Walter's saying is that, you know, we have to – we should be welcoming and polite to everyone that's out there, but that doesn't mean you have to go, you know – Overboard. Yeah. Also, it doesn't well, reverse what well, you are. So, like, if we're guys, we, we talk about boobies rights. here all the time. So, you know, you, you I mean, the rights for all Americans. Yeah. It, 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 it doesn't matter who they are, whether you like them or not, is irrelevant. You still support their rights. Yeah. And that's really what the point of the matter is. It's it's like you know we're always portrayed as being, and, and this is going back to this this whole Castile shooting, uh, that you know the gun community only supports white people's rights to shoot. Or, or to carry and and no we don't we actually do support everybody's rights and uh i don't have to like you to support your right 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 we don't yeah right exactly right right right, right. yeah we support everyone's rights to to you know without a doubt we we absolutely do that so now you know what maybe i should take this opportunity since we're talking about this to switch to uh i guess trump announced that he's um gonna have a transgender ban in the military I saw so, that this morning. Yeah. Um, and of course, you know, he's getting a lot of hate for that. What do you what do you think about that, Walter? Let's start with Walter here. <laughs> oh, yeah. go right at it. Right. Just of, yeah. I, think, I think it's good. And, and you know, it's got nothing against the people that want to do that. But the military is not a place for experimenting and, and testing. And let's let's try this. Let's try that. And besides, you got to have unity in the military. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So if you if you're looking at the guy next to you going, what the hell is he doing over there? You're going to be distracted. Sorry. You know, I mean, it's not the place for that. Everybody needs to focus. You mean your number one job in the military is to kill the enemy, to be honest with you. <laughs> I mean, it, and, and if you don't focus on that when you're trying to do that kind of thing or, or get ready to it, you're going to lose. Yeah, so I'm not uh, I'm not 100% sure of what exactly he's banning. Like, if you're already in the military and you're transgender – um, you know, you guys can tell me what that says there. Do you automatically get kicked out? Like with don't ask, don't tell. So if you said, okay, I'm gay, then you're, then you're out, which I know a lot of people used in order to well, get there's, out. There's, there's always been gay people in the military, <coughs> you know, but it wasn't, a, it wasn't a focal point. Yeah. Um, some of our badass you know, fighters uh, and warriors through history have been you gay. Know, if you're going to, if you're going to do that and then you're all of a sudden you're going to start dressing like a girl mm -hmm. or, or whatever, you're going to have problems. There's Walter, nothing you're gonna watch a mash fan. You've been watching Mash, Walter? Mash, yeah, I watch Mash, yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean Mash the the TV show? Yeah, Clanger. Yeah, 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 yeah. The the guy in the dresses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but that was comedic too. Yeah, yeah. um I listen, <laughs> no, I, I remember real. watching Mash like what, thirty years ago? I, I yeah. don't think have you seen that lately? <laughs> Not lately. Yeah. So you know what the thing is? I think. Um, yeah. I, I, I kind of. I just don't think there's a place for it in the military. Sorry. Well, yeah. Well, some people. I mean, I think there's some people in there. Maybe this goes back to some people who the military is actually paying for them to have surgeries yeah. and things like that. That's, Why? That's, um, that's exactly what I was going to say. Uh, I was just waiting on Walter to finish his uh, rant. His, his opinion on that. <laughs> I, I couldn't care less who you are. If you want to serve your country, you should be able to serve your country. Um, however, I, I do think there's a valid argument to be made uh, with taxpayer funds being used to support their transition. I don't really think that's the proper thing to do. I mean, if you're doing this with your own dime, yeah, even then, you, you're going to have how much time out for recovery? Uh, yeah. Your job is to be, to, to be a service person. So no man or woman or, or whatever you are. Um, it, it's not about your transition. It's about the job that you're there. For. Yeah, maybe that stuff should be either sorted out before you go into the military <laughs> but or you when can't, you're done with you, being in the military. You can't perform your job without drugs. You, you know, I don't know. You can't, you can't do that. Your body's not – you can't take your male body and turn it to a female without drugs. So you're dependent on that drug. You can't go out in the field in the middle of the desert for a month or two without your stuff, or you're going to just go. Your hormones. <laughs> yeah. And then you're going to be useless to the people that depend on you, regardless of your job. Right. So it's there's just 
no place for it in the military, in my opinion. So yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't know. I don't know the wording. I would have to like stop this show basically to go read the the whole <laughs> article and see what the wording is of it. I'm sure folks out there can let us know. I think that this is something that should probably be worked out before you go into the military or after but you're done being even, in the military. Uh, even, even if you. Uh, Go ahead. And, and, and I'm trying to play you no know, expert on this subject. I, again, uh, I run a gun page, not a not a transgender page per se. Um, okay. I, I, it's welcome to gun transgender. We certainly support their rights. But uh, again, I, I, I'm not familiar enough with the process and what they have to go through. I would imagine they have to take hormone injections even after the transition is complete for the rest of their life. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. I'm wrong on that. I don't know. Um, but but Walter's making a pretty good point. I mean. I haven't really thought a lot of it through because I don't know a lot of people in that going through that, but yeah. But, uh, but and then yeah. also like at what age, I mean, most people are going, the majority of people that are going into the military are younger people. So, uh, you know, at what age are you trying to deal with this? And I think there's a lot of younger people rushing into this whole thing and, and, and making decisions well, that they really, um, I, in, in a lot of cases wrong. can't undo. I, I think it's wrong, you know, to sit here and try to judge their decision. Yeah. Um, right or wrong, it's their decision to make. So I, right. again, I'm not even trying to get into that part of it. Yeah. it, it you know, it, when, this we're is, about, when we're talking about the military and, and your right to serve, I think it, you know, you do have a, well, you don't have a right to serve because it's not in the constitution no. per se. But, but I think you should be able to serve. Um, but, but again, you're, you're there to do a job, and your your ability to do the job you're there to do should be part of the consideration whether or not you. Are able to join, but I mean, you can't even join with flat feet, right? So I mean, come on. Yeah, that's true. I mean, there's lots of issues. The range one says uh, uh, being boots on the ground is stressful enough without all of you know these added right. things. Right, right, right. So and what we, you know, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Walter. I mean, all all this came about during the last administration, where it was just push. Once again, here we go. We're pushing all this stuff into the into parts of the world that or parts of the society that don't really need this push. <laughs> the military didn't need that to be successful. Well, yeah, you're, the military. you're, 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 you're pushing it on people that, and I, you know, it just, it just causes problems. I mean, you can't force people to like that person. And, and right. I think the whole prime, um, you know, I could be wrong here, but when you go into the military, you pretty much belong to uncle Sam. Correct. 10, four. You know, <laughs> and you're there to do uh, a specified uh, job or task. And if so, you can't do it. Yeah. Uh, but that's us. You know, that's from our point of view. We don't have someone here that's transgender right now to maybe give us their point of view. Uh, right. And, you know, I mean, that would be interesting to hear from someone. I think we, we, pro we have friends, as we said before, and maybe we can get someone to come on and talk about it. Um, I would tend to think if they're if they're also a gun guy. I know some uh, transgender people that were in the military. I would tend to think, but I don't want to speak for them that um, you know they would they would say that it, that those two things probably don't mix. Well, here here well, you go. We'll see. Basically, set the rules. These are the rules. If you don't meet the qualifications, you're not there. It's simple. Yeah, there's a yeah. lot of listen. There's a lot of stuff going on. I'm not against people doing these things if they have their money and it's their body and they want oh, to do care. stuff you to do it. it. You want it's to, all good. Yeah, but we'll wind yeah. up in a place I think in America one day where like someone is uh, an illegal alien or something like that, and they're like, "Guess what? I, I want to, you know." Yeah, you've got I, me I have a right. I have a right to have it cut off. Yeah, you know, and, and you, you guys got to pay for it. Cut off. No, no. <laughs> yeah. You know, well, well, um, like I like. Go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, back, back when I was in the, in the military, um, it was during the don't ask, don't tell days. And, you know, for all of the hate that Obama gets, uh, the one good thing I think he did was to get rid of the don't ask, don't tell policy. And I'll, and I'll tell you why I think that. Um, because when you have something that you have to keep a secret keep a job, you know, you're, you're opening yourself up to blackmail. And when you're handling classified material, that's a bad mix. Um, you know, you could be blackmailed into giving up government secrets so that they don't spill the beans on your homosexuality or whatever. And to be perfectly frank, most of us knew anyway. It was ridiculous. The idea that we live in such close proximity, we wouldn't know. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and getting rid of don't ask, don't tell hasn't really, has it done any kind of damage? I mean, 
Not that I'm aware of. Yeah, I think we've always been living with this in the military. Maybe Don't Ask, Don't Tell was kind of a portal that some people used against other people. And, and mm -hmm. some people used to get out of the military. But that's a lot different than chopping parts off. Sorry. Sure. Yeah. I mean, didn't we pay for Didn't we pay for like, um, I forgot, I don't know which name to use, but didn't we pay for um, someone Manning? Was it, didn't we, didn't the yeah, uh, government that? pay for the I surgery the there? He was in prison too. What is up with that? How do you pay yeah. for a prisoner's was, sex change? That's crazy. Yeah, huh? They got taking government uh, material, uh, secrets. Yeah. 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 You, you take a trader and you're going to pay for a sex change. Yeah, it's interesting. And, and maybe well, that, that's where Trump's going with this whole thing. You know, I, I, yeah. I don't I don't get it. It does. It, just because you want. I need to change. Well, great. Do it on your own. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, I don't the, military, that. The, the military should not be uh, the government's uh, social justice Petri no. dish. And or the or meals on wheels. Sorry. Right. And the military's played that meals and wheels thing for a while, too. And it's not the it's not the military's place to be. Yeah. Now, what do you mean by the meals on wheels? What are you referring to here? Uh, for, for those of us that have no clue, what the hell? Well, it seems like for a while, every you know, every time there's something happens somewhere around the world, the U.S. military oh. comes, comes to the rescue, yeah. and it's not the job of the military to to do that. I don't think. You know, I mean. I, well, because the weird thing about the world is that the world wants to tell America what to do and wants America to, everyone wants America to stay out of their business. Until they need something. Yeah, until they're getting their ass kicked and they're like, what's up with you, America? Why aren't you doing something about or, this? Or until a typhoon hits and, you know, the whole country's washed away, then we're supposed to show up. Yeah. You know? so, I mean, they won't yeah. show up here. How many times did anybody show up here to help? Um, I don't know how often that's ever happened, but the thing is, you know, it's it's yeah. like this weird things like, uh, you know, are we the police of the world? Are we the babysitters? Uh, you know, I think I think of the world or not. I think we need to, you know, not be the police so much and let the world. Uh, you know, I don't know. It's just. I think if we are, if we do things like that, I, I I don't think that we should necessarily be. I think people out there need to solve their problems. But if we if we feel backed into a situation where we have to be, we should definitely not give up, you know, our blood and treasure behind that and not be compensated right. for it. Right. Yeah. You have to. I mean, it's like it's like it's like going into a rock and not expecting to take some oil. Come on. Hello. Yeah. Or, or, you know, <laughs> hello. Whatever other treasures are there. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, you know, it's like we spent billions or trillions of dollars doing that stuff. You need something back besides. Yeah. You know, messed up people. So. Right. What do you think about this, Diablo? You're in the military. Well, I, I, I was kind of going a different track. I, I certainly agree with what you're talking about. The, the U.S. military is here to defend American American interests, essentially. Right. So, um, you know, when we're talking about allies, and when I say allies, I'm talking about people who are your <laughs> friends, right? Um, how many? Not frenemies. Hate us. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. I'm fine with us helping allies and the interests of American interests, but, but yeah, it just, why is it our responsibility to run every time something happens somewhere? And then quite frankly, ultimately the end result is that more people hate us anyway. Yeah. They, uh, they, they just kick, in our, kick, kick us or spit on us as we're leaving, you know, it's like, you know, yeah. well, where I was going to go with it though, I mean, I wanted to respond to your question, but where I was going with it is it just seems to me, that even during my time in, that a lot of our military traditions, our rites of passage, our persona, I mean, they're, they're trying to shift the military into a more corporate uh, <laughs> Boy Scout entity. Oh, whoa, 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 um, don't use that word. <laughs> it's not the Boy Scouts. That's a, well, other, just, that's a whole other subject. I used to be involved in that. That's a whole other subject. Oh, you're taking this one personally. Not, that's not, on but don't get me started. That's a whole other world. So, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I, I wasn't trying to go to Walter. Sorry, um, <laughs> I, I'm simply trying to say that it, it just seems to me that a lot of the traditions we're, we're warriors. We're not corporate entities. We're not G men from the 1960s. We're warriors. We we go fucking kill people, right? That's the point. Um, what 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 are the four things that the the Navy was known for when I joined? It was drinking, fucking, fighting, and cussing. Right? <laughs> Those are cool things to do. Uh, that's what we did for fun. Um, and, and now anymore, it's just, I don't um, even know, I don't even, I don't even know if I'd recognize the Navy anymore. Yeah. You gotta be nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you know, I, I think that 
that's probably what um, <clears throat> that's probably what Trump is trying to push back on here. We'll see how that plays out. Obviously, he's going to be the bad guy, but what's new? I mean, well, yeah. you know, you just you just keep doing it and go forward. Yeah, he's he's taking lots of heat out there anyway, no matter what goes. So I don't know if you guys have heard about this. This is a completely different thing here. So um, uh, the, here's the uh, the headline I'll give you guys. Car makers say fossil fuel vehicle ban will dent industry and stall sales. So I think in Europe, uh, and specifically in Britain and England. France. It, um, well, yeah, I see also Britain's car industry has warned that the government's proposed ban on sales of new petrol and diesel cars by 2040. So I think in the UK, they want to ban diesel and petrol cars by 2040. And um, <clears throat> they're saying, you know, that's going to be obviously destructive. You can't just ban it's this is this is like another one of those situations, right? You just ban it and then there's nothing set up. You know, there's no alternative, no bridge to something else. You guys yeah. have any opinion on this? It's car I, guys. I don't, even, I don't even like the whole new E15 thing coming out, quite frankly. Oh, that's bad. That stuff's supposed to be bad for your engines. It, it runs your engines hotter. Trump I, it, Trump could be a hero if he gets rid of all that ethanol crap, my opinion. Yeah, and it's probably I, I, not a good idea to use food, um, yeah, food it's, it's, resources to for yeah. fuel. It's a terrible idea. I, I don't, yeah, I don't see us going that route, really. Yeah. At least not in administration um well you know what the thing is like i think america now in europe they have they do have some alternatives right because i think europe has uh, either propane or or uh compressed natural gas vehicles or flex vehicles that you can uh, either go get with regular gas or propane or cng well this goes right back to the whole copper versus lead thing i, I think mm -hmm. most people if, if they didn't have something being shoved down their throat they'd be fine I mean, just even with the the gun, uh, the smart gun technology, people are fine with you looking into this stuff. They just don't want it shoved down their throat, mm -hmm. right. which right. you can't put out a product and either the market's going to accept it or they're not. Right. Yeah. Right. Let 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 the people, you know, make it make it uh, uh, economically viable, I guess we'll say, and right. see what happens. You know, yeah. don't. I mean, I compressed natural grass is cool. I have yeah. natural gas in my house, so I could have that at my house. So yeah, I a, think a, a lot of people don't, though. Yeah, I think it's a good alternative, and we should have created it as a bridge into the future. The technology is there. A lot oh, of American, all, yeah, American car, yeah, and American yeah. car companies, the American car manufacturers are making them for Europe and Africa, um, etc. Right. Et I think South America as well. But we're not making it here, and it's not a money thing. We're pushing hydrogen technology and stuff like that here. But for example, Walmart, I think Target, uh, lots of airports, uh, buses in lots of cities are running on compressed natural gas. It's um, it's fifty percent cleaner than combustion to, than gasoline, what we're using to run in our engines. So it's a lot better, and it's just as powerful. So you can convert a Mustang and lots lots of other vehicles out there. Um, to run on compressed natural gas is just that it's we, expensive. It's ex yeah. Um, if it, it's, if you have to convert it, it's expensive. Yeah, it's going to take longer for that to get cheaper. That's I've been looking at, at this. It's been getting cheaper. Yeah, but and, if, you, if you do that to your car, you just killed its value. Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> you, you just you just cut it in half right away. But I would buy a vehicle if I was buying a new vehicle and that was, was available. It's it not was, a big deal to make it available. I think Honda did have CNG vehicles, but they mostly sold them in in uh, California. Well, yeah, well, yeah, you know, um, but we see it all the time here in Gainesville. I think that most of the bus fleet, the uh, in Gainesville itself, is CNG. You can go to the airport and uh, fuel they have up. Them here. They have yeah, them here. you can put a tank in your house and fuel up there, so that way you can stockpile a little bit of your fuel in case well, you know, you, prices if, fluctuate. If you have a, a a natural gas at your house and a pump, you don't need to stockpile anything. You just, yeah, you just but you know what the you know what the problem was? There's a couple of things that happened. First of all, there's a company um, that's run by T Boone Pickens that's actually converting all these fleets around the country and putting the fueling stations in airports and stuff like that. And we, the government was going to help out, like you know, give some money. Now I know lots of people out there say like, well, this isn't something the government should do money for. But they were going to do it, and then it, it, it got stopped because basically, um, I think this had to do with uh john Kerry, and he was when he was, was when he was running for president he was swift boated you guys remember that yeah 
Yeah. So the person who funded that swift boating of John Kerry was T Boone Pickens from this company. So any so when stuff came up for the government to say, hey, let's look into this, let's see if this will be a good bridge to whatever we're gonna do in the future, all of this got shut down. Um, and didn't really happen. So we don't see the charging stations. We don't see the technology out there. And then I think when Obama came along, they just said, okay, we're just going to get all electric vehicles, you know, and we're going to go hydrogen and hydrogen is really expensive and electric. I mean, that's fit. Um, Chevy's going to stop making the Volt. Well, because they don't sell them. Yeah. Because they can't sell them without government subsidies. Well, then what is it? What good is it then? Yeah, that's the, well. That's the you point. Want, you want the government subsidizing everything? You, I mean, no, it's not the place of the government to do that. Yeah, but we also <laughs> can't demand like if you're going to buy a we new all know, truck, if you're going to buy a new vehicle, where government subsidizing comes from, right? Yeah, but one of the problems <laughs> is is that even if you wanted to, if this was better, if we if you were able to look at it and go, oh, that is better, that's cool. I want to just go out there though and buy a new vehicle. There really shouldn't be any significant cost difference. You can't because the option doesn't exist. The car companies don't make it. You know, um, they, they, you know out there. they've been funded by the government anyway. Most of the American car companies out there, I think it was only Ford that really didn't take money. Chrysler. Uh, was it uh, yeah, well, Chrysler this, took money. This, this time around, this time around, Fiat bailed out Chrysler. There'd yeah. be no Chrysler without Fiat. So. Oh, so was it Chrysler that didn't take money? Chrysler was bought out by Fiat. Yeah. So, you know, you don't have the option. You don't have it if you want it here in America. And it would be a lot. It, it, there's lots of good things. And it could be flex things. So if you had to buy gas, you could buy gas. If gas was cheaper, you could buy that. If CNG yeah. was cheaper. But we're just not doing it. And then, so now we're running into a situation, like, like in Europe, they're just like, yeah, by 2040, you got to stop this. But, right? you know, but there's really, I mean, I mean, I mean let's, let's, let's be real here. There's no shortage of fuel, period. There's no shortage of fuel. I was in the 70s. They said when I was a kid, it was going to, by now you're going to be riding a Jetson car because there'd be no fuel. It didn't happen. Okay. <laughs> so it's going to be driven by you could you could so it's, it's I mean be driven I think, by that. So you think that so you think we can we can not use you, you're saying you, we can use gasoline for the next thousand years because I doubt. No, it. I didn't say a thousand. Okay, how many but, years? Well, uh, look, next hundred years. There's they say there's coal in this country for three hundred years. Yeah, but we're not talking about coal. We're talking about coal gasoline. Can be ga go ahead, coal can be gasified. Coal can be liquid, made in a slurry. The Germans used coal for a lot of different things because they had to. Um, so yeah, I, I don't necessarily think coal is I, the best thing either. I don't even I, believe there's such a thing as like clean coal or anything. Yeah, there like is. That. Come so, on, they uh, use coal. Yeah, that's bullshit. You're, 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 you're sitting in, you're, you're doing, <laughs> we're doing this right now on coal-fired generators, so. Yeah, I know, but I'm not saying like if there's and something you're not, out, you're not choking outside, trust me. Yeah, but this is the goes back to the conversation we were having earlier about copper and all that stuff, right? If there's something cleaner, why do something that's obviously dirtier and let, takes, you know, let me we just have say, cleaner stuff. Let me say one thing. One government program that works. What? Come on. One government funded program that works. All of Obama's all of Obama's buddies that were in the, the electric stuff and the solar, what they do, that was yeah. all it was all political payback. They all went belly up. Yeah. No, I'm not saying that. But, uh, <laughs> but for example, when it comes to com compressed natural gas and propane and all that stuff, we have more of that here in America than Saudi Arabia has oil. Yeah, so we have we, we, right we, off the right off. fighting all these wars and doing all the bullshit that we're doing when we have those resources. Go and ask, it's cleaner than coal or. or go, go ask the Honorable gas. John McCain then. Ask him why we're doing that. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> the, the and I get for that stuff uh, essentially the people with the money who decide what products to put the market right. to them had decided they're not going to do it yeah and honestly i th here's what i think is going to happen gasoline in america is going to have to be about somewhere like eight dollars a gallon we've already we've already been this route though why is it why is it so expensive in europe you tell me that Hank. because they don't subsidize it you're full of shit. It's <laughs> taxed out. It's taxed out the yin yang. Uh, I think they they to also pay for all to pay for all the socialism over there. Come on, come on, come on. Come I think on, it's a on. I think it's a little bit more than that. But fuel, fuel. You know, there's a lot of things that, that go into it, but what's going to drive it eventually is demand. You know, when demand right. when when gas goes to five dollars a gallon, everybody wanted a small car. 
Yeah. It, when, as soon as it went away, nobody wants that. Scrap. Yeah, but it's because the reality is no one really wants a small car. They want a big, well, comfortable why, car. Why would you want a small yeah. car? Yeah. So what I'm saying to you, like we're talking about what's pra like people doing what's practical. You can want to do something that's practical. If people don't manufacture those vehicles, what's going to happen? If they're not going to manufacture those vehicles, they're going to make electric cars instead. And like you said, we're making electric, like no one wants uh, nuclear power plants in America. So I don't know how the hell well, see, we're going to generate the electricity. So that's ultimately, when we get there when we get to the point where we are paying eight dollars a gallon then what's our options going to be if all if they're like no you're going to have to buy a tesla or whatever crap is tesla. out there yeah 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 yeah, well, yeah. I, I, ultimately we're, we're not i don't think any of us here in this conversation want government to force any of this crap down us right 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 and we're not looking for government subsidies we're looking for investors in the industry to put a product to market for the consumers to purchase. Yeah. That's what we're talking about here. Yeah. Give us yeah. what we want. But you see it, look, the same thing happened in the gun world, right? What did gun companies do? Do we all want do all of us want just AR 15s? No, but they went out there made AR 15s and they're now like, what's wrong with you guys? Why aren't you just buying all the AR 15s in the world? That were the guns are not subsidized by the gov though. So, Yes, I get it. So now what I'm trying what I was trying to say to you, so what's going to happen? The AR15 market is crashing. Well, and it, it, it'll it'll settle out. Yeah, when it crashes out and then people go, "Yeah, we don't want that crap and they don't buy it." So it's the same thing for us. When when things get expensive enough, then we will spend $10,000 to convert our vehicles to something else. Well, right? Then we'll do it. We'll go, we'll stop. By, and that almost happened before they bailed out the auto industry. I think someone's saying that Ford didn't take the bailout, which I didn't, I didn't think that yeah, they Ford did. Ford didn't take any money. No. Yeah. So that was all we almost, we almost did this before they bailed it out. Right. Because remember what, what happened? Like we stopped buying new vehicles and then they were like, yeah, we're going to take old vehicles that are out there and just wipe them out and crush you, them. Oh, cra cla cash for clunkers. You remember Right, that? exactly. Yeah. That, so was that, a, that was another political fiasco too. I mean, anyway. Yeah, but well, that's why I'm saying that the whole thing is going to have to come to a standstill and people are going to have to suffer before they go, yeah, we're not going to buy new cars. We're just going to spend money and convert the vehicles that we have. And then companies might go, oh, well, if people are converting these vehicles. Maybe we should and, make some. Yeah. So if things have to fall apart. I'm, you know, it's just like the same thing with politics, I think. Everyone's, you know, ultimately politics have to get bad like this, <laughs> what it is now. And it's not really that bad, really. It's, uh, things yeah, are, but it has, to, it has to get ridiculous before more people well, start paying attention. You know, when the 80-year-old guy with brain cancer is still, still holding office, office. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's bad. That's bad, you know, because yeah. he was acting goofy well, before they – they found that thing and he was acting goofy because he had a brain tumor. It's like talking about pollution. I'm going to run out to my car with my phone and run it so I can charge this phone up to saying 20%. So we're going to pollute some, uh, to say, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Probably, um, I'll probably run the AC. Yeah. Well, if you want to, you know what we've been doing, we've been doing this for some yeah, time. So if, yeah, if you're going to run out, man, we could, we could call it wraps here. Why don't you phone with me? Okay, yeah. So, yeah. Why don't you, um, you know, plug uh, stop mom's demand action one more time, one more again. Tell tell us about it while you're walking out to the car. I think I'm gonna get some dinner. You're, you're getting dinner. Yeah, Walter's hungry. We got, you know, he's getting feisty. I could tell from feisty. how hungry he's getting. So yeah, man. So so Diablo, tell us about tell us about um your Facebook group one more time, one more again. Certainly. I uh, just showed you uh, Mr. Pantel, the owner of the establishment that I'm in, and I'm not locked in. Good. <laughs> didn't um, turn the alarm on you? <laughs> no. Anyway, uh, well, Stop Mom's Demand Action is a group, a pro-gun group. I basically consider it a clearinghouse for gun news to keep people informed. Um, I try to share educational material, gun safety material. Um, I try to link various gun personalities. Um, what you're doing right here, quite frankly, I want to thank you a lot for, because it's, it's certainly something I believe a lot in, the gun community uh, coming together. All right. Sorry, getting in my car. Um, well, you got to discuss things. You got to talk about stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah, because you know, um, yeah, you know, uh, Mr. Strange here has been very kind to me over the years that I've known him. Listen to that beautiful engine. Oh, I like that engine <laughs> sound. Yeah, fossil <laughs> fuels on fire. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> now let's get that air conditioner going. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Oh, we're in Seattle, right? You're in Seattle. It doesn't get hot in Seattle. Come on. Oh, okay. I think we lost him for a second oh. here. Um, or he went, he muted uh, or something like that. So, yeah, we'll probably get him back here in a second. I'm sure he, he plugged into the car and then uh, the electronics. <laughs> took over. Yeah, all the computers took over. Yeah. So, um, I think, uh, you know, just... What he was talking about is Stop Moms Demand Action. I want to encourage folks out there to find that. It's on Facebook. It's a group on Facebook. You just need to go in there, like it, and then when they post up stuff, uh, you know, help them out to share the articles that they're doing. Basically, they're a group that's counteracting the Everytown slash Bloomberg funded. Anti-gunners. Um, yeah, Moms Demand Action, which is like an anti-gun, anti-Second Amendment group. Yeah out there um I, i'm not sure whether or not we'll get him back we'll hang on here and see if we do if not walter what's going on with you man what's oh up you? well the same old stuff working uh posting stuff on facebook posting stuff on instagram yeah. you know i got high point stuff to post uh yeah did you hit a thousand yet did you hit, have a thousand followers on instagram yet i probably do I, I i don't follow yeah. it that close i guess yeah go in there to safety harbor firearms and like uh Follow them on Instagram. Uh, can we get you to give something away on Instagram when you get to a thousand? Yeah, you know, we were talking about that. I need to do that. Um, um, something simple. Um, I will. We're going to do something. Yeah, gotta, yeah let's gotta, do something. I got to figure that out. Um, we'll give some stuff away. Yeah, let's do, let's get, um, you know, we'll just go there, follow, let him get up to a thousand. I don't know what number you're at right now. I haven't yeah, I'll, checked I'll it in a check while. it out. Yeah, I haven't yeah. looked. Yeah, today, so we'll, today was kind of a funny day. I didn't get much to do uh, internet-wise today. So, Right. So, you know, um, definitely check out Safety Harbor Firearms. What I'm going to do is I'm not sure whether or not we're going to get Diablo coming back in here. So, um, you know, maybe that, that roar of the engine there was the, like the last word from him. So I'm going to thank everyone that sponsors us. And that starting with Safety Harbor Firearms and Walt and the whole family there. 1,006, my friend. Oh, you're 1,000. Congratulations. Yes. Yo, cheers. You're 1,006. Okay. Yay. You better. Okay. Definitely something has to be given away, man. Something has to happen. Yeah. yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. So we'll come, we'll come up with that. We'll come up with something. Yeah. Yeah. So and we, we still, still got to give away a 50 cal, too. So we'll yes, we've got lots of stuff coming up. We're working on all those things. We're giving away a 50 yeah. cal. We're giving away a 308. We've got all of that uh, coming up. I want to thank Safety Harbor Firearms. I want to thank Rand CLP that sponsors us. Andrew's Custom Leather, as well as Big Daddy Guns that provides this space here that we use to broadcast and the uh, the internet and all that kind of good stuff. And let's not forget about the folks on Patreon who support us. Uh, if you want to support us, it's Patreon slash Hank Strange. We want to thank everyone that goes on there and supports us. Um, that's much appreciated. And yeah. one last time, I'm going to encourage everyone out there. We're going to put um, a link in the description of this video to stop mom's demand action. Very good group. Did we get, did we get you back? Okay. He's back. Yeah. Yeah. So go ahead, man. I you can actually see you now. Oh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you get the last word, man. We're about to end this here. Uh, where did I drop off? Um, you were telling us about the group. All right. Yeah. Um, y right now, a lot of the uh, social media groups are, are under attack. Uh, you look at Facebook, you look at YouTube, uh, you look at Google, all of these uh, social media outlets where we've started to have our voice heard is making it more difficult for us. Um, so I think it's really important that we all stick together. We talk to one another and, you know, we continue to push to have our voice heard because right now, if it's not these types of things reaching out to the overall community, uh, you know, what are we, what's the default? It's MSNBC, right? I mean, I mean, uh, th right. Yeah. Th those are your only yeah. options anymore, yeah. right? Yeah. So uh, the social media is our ability to get out there, have our voices heard, 
uh, provide the counter arguments, that sort of thing, and and have these types of discussions. Uh, it's it's really so important what what you're doing, what I'm doing, what so many of the other uh, social media personalities are doing. All right, cool. Yeah, man, I totally agree with you. We should definitely help each other out, support each other, you know, um, and keep up the fight. Yep, yep. All right. So one last time, I'm going to say peace out to you guys. We're out of here. Peace. See ya.